Good evening, everyone. Just a quick announcement. In accordance with the open meeting law, the board states, for the record, that this meeting is being recorded by NORCAM and may be recorded by other local media. Please rise for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Lots of visitors this evening. I love it. Hello, everyone at home. Um, first, I just want to say happy birthday to the Chief Murphy. He's turned 62 today. Oh, is it 62? I can't remember. I think. <laughs> it is my birthday. Um, we have a proclamation to read first. And I, um, before we read the motion, I'm going to read the proclamation. Okay. And this is for you, Chief Murphy. This is the Older Americans Month 2017 proclamation. Whereas the town of North Reading includes older Americans who rich, richly contribute to our community and whereas we acknowledge that what it means to age has, has changed for the better. Whereas the town of North Reading is committed to supporting older adults as they take charge of their health, explore new opportunities and activities and focus on independence. And whereas the town of North Reading can provide opportunities to enrich the lives of individuals of all ages by involving older adults in the redefinition of aging in our community, Prom sorry, promoting home and community-based services that support independent living, encouraging older adults to speak up for themselves and others, and providing opportunities for adults to share their experiences. Now, therefore, we, the Board of Selectmen of the Town of North Reading, do hereby proclaim May 2017 to be Older Americans Month. We urge every resident to take time during this month to acknowledge older adults and the people who serve them as influential and vital parts of our community. Dated this 22nd day of May 2017, Michael A. Prisco, Chairman of the Board, North Reading, Board of Selectmen. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I move to proclaim the month of May 2017 as Older Americans Month and sign the proclamation you just read. Oh, I have a second. 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 I got a motion and a second. Any discussion? Hearing none. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Mr. Chairman, you have the proclamation for your signature? One, one absent. Okay. Next on the is meeting minutes. Mr. Schultz, if you could lead the charge on the meeting minutes, I'd um, appreciate it. Sure. Mr. Chairman, I move to approve the May 4, 2017 regular session minutes as written. Do I have a second? Second. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion on the minutes of May 4, 2017 regular session? None. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Four, one absent. Mr. Chairman, I move to approve the May 4, 2017 executive session meeting minutes as written. Second. Mr. Messeri, do I have a second? Oh, I'm sorry. I heard you second. I'm no, sorry. I asked for a second. Second. <laughs> second by Mr. Messeri. Any discussion on the May 4th, 2017 executive session? None heard. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I move to approve the May 8, 2017 regular session minutes as written. Do I have a second? Second. I have a motion to second. Any discussion? None heard. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Four. Oh, one absent. Mr. Chairman, I move to approve the May 8, 2017 executive session minutes as written. Second. I have a motion. I have a second. Any discussion? None heard. All those in favor? Aye. 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 
four oh one out. Public comment. Anyone here for public comment? No? Okay. We'll move to the joint meeting with the Community Planning Commission to do joint appointments for the Economic Development Committee. And the CPC members, if you maybe you wouldn't mind coming up to the front desk. And do you have all those ready to go? Yeah, we have a... Thank you for coming in this evening. Much appreciated. So the first uh, joint appointment Mr. Schultz, you have it? Uh, yes, for Mr. Mr. Delaney. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I move that the Community Planning Commission and the Board of Selectmen vote to reappoint Sean T. Delaney to the Economic Development Committee for a term to expire March 31, 2020. Do I have a second? Second. Second. I have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? We have to do a roll call vote, I believe, on these. Any discussion? Any? Okay. Mr. Masseri, it's a roll call vote. Oh, Mr. Delaney. Mr. Schultz? Aye. Mr. Delaney. Mr. Delaney. Mr. Delaney. Mr. Mr. Delaney. The Board of Selectmen Chair votes Mr. Delaney. Mr. Mr. Delaney. Mr. Delaney. No, Mr. Delaney. So three members of the CPC members voted, and there's two absent, and we have one absent. Mr. Delaney's is through. Next. Uh, Mr. Me. Chairman, I move that the Community Planning Commission and the Board of Selectmen vote to reappoint Joseph Lauria to the Economic Development Committee for a term to expire March 3, 2020. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Mr. Masseri. Any discussion? None. Okay. Mr. Masseri? Mr. Lauria. Mr. Mr. Short, Mr. Mingibelli. Mr. Lari. I vote Mr. Lara. Mr. Lara. Mr. Lara. Mr. Lara. And the CPC members all vote Mr. Lara. Complete. I just want to thank the Economic Development Committee members that agreed to get reappointed. Reappointed. I think we've gotten a lot accomplished over this last year, and I know we have a full plate for 2017 and 18. So I want to thank those two members for continuing their service to the Economic Development Committee. Okay. We have a few more minutes before our informational hearing. So I thought maybe we could, is there something else we could maybe go over the Memorial Day? Certainly. I already did it. Oh, okay. I didn't miss public comment, no? No, you, you called for it, yeah. Okay. Yeah, since we have a few minutes, maybe we can go over the Memorial Day plans, if that's okay with you, Mr. Gilbert. Just bear with me one moment. Don't take your time. I threw a little curveball at you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. So I want to thank the Veterans Agent Susan Magnum for preparing this information for the board and for the community. So just going through the schedule for the day, on uh, Monday, Memorial Day, early morning services begin at 7 o'clock a.m. at Riverside Cemetery, 7.45 at the Harmony Vale Cemetery, 8.30 a.m. at the Ipswich River Park Blue Star Memorial, and 8.45 a.m. at the Park Street Cemetery. 9.15 at the Senior Center is the arrival for uh, children's decorated bike contests, with judging beginning at 9.30 on Monday morning. The parade uh, g gathers between 9.15 and 9.30 at the Senior Center. It kicks off sharp at, at 10 o'clock, at 10 o'clock sharp, uh, going down Bow Street, past the Flint Memorial Library, Park Street, turning right at Nan's Cafe, Park Street to Mount Vernon Street, and then right on Haverhill Street back to the Common. And there's a listing of a number of different civic organizations that will be participating in the uh, parade. There's a ceremony at the end of the parade that takes place at the bandstand and gazebo with local and state dignitaries as well as honorary parade marshals. 
and that's scheduled for 11 o'clock depending upon the end time of the parade. Um, it will also include a roll call and placing memorial wreaths along the with the traditional speeches. And at the conclusion of the ceremony, participants are, uh, and guests are invited to come inside the Senior Center for light refreshments. And in the board's packet, uh, and I should just note here, that I want to thank the Minute Militia uh, for their efforts to put the Memorial Day Parade together, and the Veterans uh, Department for uh, assisting. Um, we have a quick uh, review here of the program uh, for the observance, and that's in the, pa in the packet as well, uh, along with uh, the speaking order. And then there's a copy of the proclamation that was provided to us by the governor's office uh, proclaiming May 29th, 2017 to be Memorial Day. Mr. Schultz, this is your first time, so we do gather by 9.30. I'd ask all board members if they could get there before 9.30 so we could um, get organized and then the parade will start sharply at 10. And then if everyone has the time to stay for the ceremonies afterwards, it would be much appreciated. And hope to, I do hope the community comes out. It's always been a nice little parade and uh, and we've had pretty good weather, knock on wood, so far for the last several years. So, hopefully, we pray for nice weather that day. Anyone have any questions on the subject? Okay. We got a few more minutes. Mr. Chairman, uh, suggest maybe we could look at number 12, which is the upcoming meeting schedule. Yep. Sounds great. Okay. So the next meeting is town meeting evening, right? W would you like me to review the schedule? Yes, go right so, ahead. So the next meeting is uh, scheduled for Monday, June 5th, the evening of town meeting at 6 o'clock p.m. Um, and I have a more extensive note that I will review during the uh, Warren article presentation. But uh, there will be another event going on the evening of town meeting at the high school. That is a grand march associated with the senior prom. So we do expect there to be a lot of activity on the middle and high school campus, especially uh, in the hour to hour and a half before the town meeting. I don't know that there'll be a direct implication on the town meeting itself, but for those who are on a particular board or committee and have a pre-meeting, such as this board or the finance committee, planning commission, or school committee, depending upon their agendas, uh, I would strongly encourage folks to plan accordingly to allow extra time both for, for parking and to navigate the, uh, the site. Uh, I'll speak further to that uh, later on, though. Uh, so the next meeting is Monday, June. Well, actually, there's a joint executive session tomorrow evening at 5.30, then uh, followed by the June 5th meeting at 6 o'clock, and then the next regular board meeting is June 19th. Excuse me, before you go on, yes. where is the meeting going to be held? I believe it's going to be in the high school principal's office, I which see. is where it normally is held. Mr. Schultz, do you know where that is? Okay. And um, Mrs. Minupelli will run the meeting until I arrive because my daughter is senior prom, so I don't want to miss her. But I will get in there as soon as I can. <coughs> okay, please continue. The, the regular meeting of June nineteenth, we have uh, Reading Municipal Light Department scheduled to come and participate and present an update as to some goings on uh, for uh, their uh, entity. We also will have the annual water rate hearing, and uh, we have just received an application for a license transfer as well that we'll ask the board to consider. Uh, because it's the next opportunity to do so uh, within the statutory guidelines. <coughs> Excuse me. And then the draft schedule, the next regular meeting would be on Monday, July 17th, followed by a meeting on Monday, August 21st. Okay, just quickly on the June 19th meeting, mm -hmm. we're also going to review briefly the liaison assignments that I sent out. Yes. Can you make sure that's on the agenda? Mm -hmm. so. I believe I have it on there. I'm sorry for not mentioning it, but yes. Please continue. Uh, did, I know the board members were going to look at their schedules uh, for the summer to make sure that the meetings in June, July, and August uh, fit with any travel plans. Uh, so we're only going to have one meeting in July? Uh, the proposal right now is for one meeting each in July and August, and yep. I think that was more a reflection of some of the feedback received last summer in terms of the schedule, as well as uh, the, the number of consecutive meetings that yeah. we've had to have because of the special town meeting and other business. All right, all right. That's not to prevent something else from coming up in the interim that requires a special meeting, unfortunately, but for now we thought that this would be somewhere between then between now and then we're going to discuss the water ban uh, yes uh, it could be as soon as June 5th may not be till June 19th okay but. Michael yes, I will be away on the 17th, 17th. I will be away that week. 
July 17th. July 17th, yep. And that, I, I did mention at our last meeting when we talked about that, I, that I wasn't available that evening. Oh, you're not available? No, on that. You want to change the date? We certainly can do that. What date? Um. Mr. Chairman, through you, I do not believe I will be available on July 10th. I think, no, I think we pigeonhole this. Because mm. I think. Michael, I'm available any Monday but the 17th. Just well, we're not going to do it on the 3rd of July, and we're not going to do it on the 10th without the town administrator. 24th. Um, so it leads us with the, the 24th, which is fine for myself. Uh, and any conflicts? No. Okay. We'll just have to touch base with Mr. Masseri. Mr. O'Leary. I mean, Mr. O'Leary, thank you. Okay. So let's Certainly. tentatively move it to the 24th, pending Steve's uh, response. Okay. What was Please. the August date? August 21st. It would also be the date that warrant article submissions are due for the October town meeting. Okay. And then after that, um, based on the timelines associated with the October town meeting, uh, we were recommending a meeting be held on Tuesday, September 5th. Uh, in order for the board to sign the warrant for the October town meeting and then a meeting to be held on Monday, September 18th for regular business and for the informational hearing for the October town meeting with the October town meeting scheduled to occur on Monday, October 2nd. So that can be a late day after Labor Day, any problem for you? Okay. No. Is that not good to be in snow on us? September 5th. We're going to have a meeting. Okay. Anyone having conflict with September 5th? No. Okay. And, and the next one you said was going to be 18th. September 18th, which would be a Monday. Okay. Followed by Monday, October 2nd, and Monday, October 16th. And we can revisit the later dates as we get closer. Yeah. But I think most important is getting that first September meeting date scheduled so we can get the warrant signed and to the printer to be mailed to the residents. Very good. Okay. Good. Uh, just, I see Mr. Carucci just walked in. I am going to be sending you an email just asking that we, the board would like 15 minutes tomorrow evening. And so we'd like to start the joint meeting at 545, but we need from 5.30 to 5.45 is a, just a, uh, an executive session meeting with the board. Okay. But I won't let it go any more than 15 minutes, I promise. I'll do my best. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That brings us to the 7.30 informational hearings. Uh, do we have a notice? There be a hearing notice in the packet, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Schultz, do you want to take the... <coughs> That was October 16th, right? Is that right? That's correct. That's correct. That's correct. That's correct. Oh, I apologize. I don't see it. Yeah, I don't see it in my packet either. I don't, I don't have that. Bear with me one moment. Oh, Vanetti, you're going to stay for only that one article, or you're going to stay for others? No, sir. I just wanted to know what was on your agenda. Okay. Well, we're going to move to that one first. So you have to read the whole notice. Board members, after we read the informational hearing notice, we're going to start with Article 28 allow Mr. Venezia an opportunity to speak and then 
we'll start from the top and work our way down. The old fashioned way. That's right. So, so just reading out until town hall and then dispensing with the reading of all the articles. And then I'm concluding. Just reading that up. Yes. Okay. And that's a good result. Uh, Mr. Chairman, if I may. Yes, please. The uh, Notice of Informational Hearings, the Town of North Reading, Board of Selectmen does hereby notify the residents of the Town of North Reading that the hearings on the following articles contained in the June 5, 2017 annual town meeting warrant will be held Monday, May 22nd, 2017, 7.30 p.m., room 14 at Town Hall, and I'd ask for permission to dispense with uh, reading all the articles. Great. Okay. Okay. Uh, the hearing is open. Wait, one, one more oh. paragraph here. Uh, these hearings are held pursuant to sections 18 through 25 of Chapter 30A of the Massachusetts General Laws, the Open Meeting Law. Any interested citizen is welcome to attend and participate in these hearings. Thank you, Mr. Schultz. Mr. Gilbert. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Shall I take the articles in order? Yes, so are we going to go through every one of them? We generally do. A very brief description for each and to answer That's any questions. <coughs> I'd like to start with 28 and then go back to in order to allow Mr. Vanessa the opportunity to come to the podium, speak on that one article, and then he can get back to his busy evening he has. On the same, on the same article? I think so. Okay. So, Mr. Chairman, through you, Article 28, submitted by the school committee would authorize the naming of the distance learning lab at North Reading Middle and High School in honor of former superintendent of schools, Dr. David S. Troughton. Uh, this comes to us also recommended by the members of the Secondary School Building Committee represented here by Mr. Carucci, the chairman. And I would just note as we go along, we will need to assign each article yes. to a board member to either read the motion or report the recommendation of the board. Mm -hmm. Good evening, you have the Mr. Floor, Chairman, sir. members of the board. Thank you for taking me out of order. Jerry Venezia, Vice Chairman of the School Committee. I'm here tonight to speak on behalf of Article 28, uh, which proposes that the distance learning lab at the North Reading Middle School High School be named in honor of Dr. David Troughton. Um, <clears throat> this proposal was brought to us by Chuck Carucci, the Chairman of the Secondary School Building Committee. He proposed that we, that we do this. Uh, our policy requires us to have a public hearing and to solicit other nominations as well as uh, Dr. Troughton's name for this, uh, for this honor. We had that public hearing. Uh, there were no other nominations put forward and uh, there was no opposition to this article. Um, <coughs> based on uh, that, we voted unanimously to approve this proposal and ask the selectmen to place it on the warrant article, uh, on the warrant for town meeting. Uh, Dr. Troughton was superintendent of schools from 1994 to 2009. Uh, he came in right after the Education Reform Act of 1993, and he was instrumental in implementing the provisions of the Education Reform Act of 1993. Don't ask me what those were, but I know he implemented them. Uh, and from what I understand, he did a very good job. Um, in addition to that, Dr. Troughton believed very, very strongly in No Child Left Behind. He put a great emphasis on special education in the North Reading public school systems. And I think that we have probably one of the best uh, special education programs of any school district around. And that was his thing. Um, in addition to that, Dr. Trout was the architect of renovating and rebuilding every single school facility in North Reading. Started with the little school back in, I think, 1988, 1999. Uh, moved on to the Hood School, which was renovated in the early 2000s. And then, of course, I think a lot of people remember the controversy over the Batchelder School. But Dr. Troughton, again, was superintendent at the time of uh, the renovation and rebuilding of the Batchelder School, which opened in 2006. And of course, he was uh, behind the scenes and the person that really got off the ground the middle school, high school project. Uh, <coughs> it was Dr. Troughton, Chuck Carucci, and myself that back, I think, in 2010 or 11, I forget when it was, went in and met with the school building authority. And that was the start of the project. Dr. Troughton was a strong believer in the, both the middle school and high school being rebuilt and renovated. Um, he retired in 2009, and after that, it was the, the project was picked up by uh, uh, Keith Manville, who was here for a year as superintendent, then Kathy Willis, and of course, John Bernard. So I'd strongly, re I'd strongly recommend uh, this article. I'd ask for your support and your recommendation as well. 
Um, I think it would be a great honor for Dr. Troughton, who did a tre tremendous job during the 15 years that he was superintendent here. Thank you. Mr. Carucci, do you have anything else to say? No, you're good. Said it all. Okay. I've seen all the kids, so you know, I've seen all the superintendents since the high school came in. Is anyone else here in the crowd who would like to speak on Article 28? Board members? Okay. We're going to vote on each one. We want us to do it now? If the board is so inclined, it may vote to make a recommendation, yes. I think it would be great if we could. Okay. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I move to recommend Article 28, authorized naming of distance learning lab at North Reading Middle slash High School. Do I have a second? Second. I have second. a motion and a second. Any discussion? None? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. Through you, Mr. Chairman, Through you, Mr. Chairman uh, were the school committees a sponsor? Does the chairman of the school committee wish to make the motion on town meeting floor, or does, he, does, does the committee wish for the board to? That's what they should do. Um, yes, we'll make the motion. And so we'll, Mr. And then, Chairman, through you, if we could uh, designate somebody to report the boards. At the end of the, when we get to that last article, I'll, we'll identify someone. But right now, I just want to okay. start from the beginning, work our way through. Sure. Okay. Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, Article 1. Mr. Chairman, through you, we, we do have this working slide that the board asked for a couple of meetings ago that shows projects on the horizon. It yes. remains unchanged from the last review. Balance is available for all of the major accounts uh, of the town in Article can, 1. Can you go back to that? Sure. Again, this reflects uh, balances after the March 13th town meeting and prior to any action being taken at the June 5th town meeting. Where's the solid waste one? Um, we've not traditionally identified it, but we okay. can certainly get the balance. I think it's actually a, the, the balance will show up in the article later on, if I'm not mistaken. And if not, I'm sure by then Ms. Rook will have Got the Got it right here. Thank you. Okay, thanks. <coughs> now, article 1 would be the budget amendment for fiscal year 2017. At the moment, we are projecting that no action will be required and that the article may be passed over, although. Uh, we'll continue to monitor different accounts as we get closer towards the town meeting. Okay. Again, the board customarily makes its recommendation on town meeting floor. We've already voted that, right? We voted for a recommendation at town yeah. meeting, yes. Yep. Okay. Article 2, to resolve a fiscal year 2017 snow and ice deficit. The proposal is to utilize free cash to resolve a projected deficit of $60,000. $60,000? Free cash. From free cash, right? <coughs> bless you. Bless you. God bless. Okay. Article 3 is a transfer of funds to the Capital Improvement Stabilization Fund. It's a fund to be used for capital purchases and debt service. The balance today is $1,185,760. And in accordance with the financial plan for 2018, the proposal here would be to add $926,637 from free cash and $200,000 from the FY 2017 debt service budget um, to fund uh, the operating budget. Um, 75,000 of this, of the unapproved feasibility study has been added to what was previously in there. So this number reflects the $75,000 for the feasibility study that we proposed to set aside into the, debt, ca the capital improvement stabilization fund, a debt capital fund, excuse me. <coughs> and the board's voted to recommend. And that's from the FY. Article 4, the transfer of funds to the Water Stabilization Fund. The balance of the fund today is $448,306. The Water Department's in the process of identifying a number that would be transferred in, and we generally do have a number that gets transferred in from the balance of unexpended funds, uh, and we'll have that recommendation the evening of town meeting. Okay. Well, Mr. Chairman, through you to the Finance Director. Yes. I just wanted to note that the balance in water retained earnings at this time is $511,057. So um, with discussions with the water superintendent, superintendent today, the plan is to most likely um, transfer that whole sum. But that is the balance. And 
with consultation with the DPW director, we will confirm that before town meeting. Okay. Any questions? For us? So I'm going to ask Mr. Masseri if you could take articles one through four. Okay. Is that okay? Article 5 is a transfer of funds to the Stabilization Fund. The balance today is just over $2.2 million uh, when taking into account a transfer that was made in at the October 2016 town meeting. There is no plan for a transfer in during this upcoming June town meeting. Article 6, fiscal year 2017 transfer of funds to the other post-employment benefits liability trust fund. The balance in the fund is $578,724. Uh, available funds of $250,000 that are projected to remain in this current year's pensions and benefit budget would be transferred into the OPEP Liability Trust Fund uh, under this article. And the board has previously voted to recommend. Okay. Article 7, transfer of funds into the Solid Waste Stabilization Fund. Uh, what the board has traditionally done is any funds that are projected to remain in the FY17 Solid Waste Budget are transferred into the stabilization fund. We generally identify the fund, the, the amount closer to town meeting. Uh, I don't see the balance on the slide here. I would ask if the finance committee, if the finance director may be aware or be able to identify what the balance of that fund is. The balance of the solid waste stabilization fund is approximately 100000 It's uh, listed in the printed warrant. Um, and with speaking to DPW uh, this afternoon, uh, the range could be 25,000 to 30,000, but we will have a firm number for town meeting. Is that in addition to the 100 or is The balance in the stabilization fund is 100,533 yep. as of today. So we plan on taking 25 to 30,000 from the FY17 sanitation budget and putting it back into the solid waste stabilization fund. So it'll be an increase then? Exactly. Okay. Mr. Chairman, through you, I know that some board members have yes. expressed an interest of trying to look at potential uses for that, um, the balance that's in there as a way to try to control some of the costs associated with uh, solid waste removal. And that's something that we've begun a discussion on, um, you know, with the goal of trying to implement for fiscal year 2018. We certainly would bring anything back to the board to refer yeah. for discussion. I know Mr. Schultz brought it to my attention. And since we can only use that money for solid waste, right, and we can't use it for anything else? It can be used to offset the cost of, you know, disposal yeah. services. It, uh, it thought it would be something we could potentially look at, giving the seniors mm -hmm. in our town some break on their tax, the trash bills. Sure. Um, the, the seniors do receive, if they are eligible for um, a tax break, um, they do receive partial on their trash bill as well. Um, so I think we need to, you know, have a working group meeting on, you know, what the ultimate goal would be, whether it's for low income or if it's age dependent, you know, we have to come up with some, some guidelines. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mr. Masseri. It would be valuable in that discussion to have the last five or ten years worth of what the balance was at the end of the year. Of the stabilization? Uh, basically, the fact that we have money there means that mm -hmm. based on the getting twenty five thirty thousand dollars it means that the, we haven't raised the uh, rates in a long time mm -hmm. and it's because we put a lot of effort into the solid waste and uh, materials uh, that don't cost us money to dispose of correct so uh, it would be good to look at the history of that just to see sure. if it's been flat or well, last year, you know, what we transferred in from the sanitation budget to the solid waste stabilization fund was approximately $30,000. So, it, you know, it's pretty much in that range um, that we do transfer into mm -hmm. it. But um, I think we should probably have some type of a working meeting on it and include the DPW director because I know that the, the contracts are up June 30th, 2018. Um, yeah. So that could play a role as well. Um, you know, because everything costs are rising, so um, we may need to be using it to stabilize everybody's trash rate from not increasing. Um, so, I think further discussions are definitely. Yeah, no, I, but I think yeah. Mr. Schultz's recommendation is at least worthy mm -hmm. of a consideration. But obviously, if uh, we have to be able to afford anything, we do. 
but I, I agree. Thank you. <coughs> okay. Next. Article 8, the selection of town officers. It's routine and it authorizes the Board of Selectmen to choose town officers, and the Board has recommended the article to the town meeting. Article 9, hear and act on reports of the town officers. Similarly, it's routine, and the Board has recommended the article. Okay, I'm going to have um, Mr. Schultz, do you mind taking Articles 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9? Article 10 authorizes the Department, the Director of Public Works uh, to accept easements. Again, another routine article that's been recommended by the Board. Article 11 authorizes the Treasurer to enter into compensating balance agreements. This is routine. It allows a portion of interest earnings to be retained by the bank in exchange for services. The Board has recommended the article. Article 12 authorizes Chapter 90 construction. We anticipate receiving $508,338.27 from the state in fiscal year 2018, which will be supplemented by $300,000 in town road funding in the capital improvement plan for fiscal year 2018. The board recommended the article. Article 13, uh, prior year bills. Uh, we have one known bill at this time. It's a snow and ice related bill, if I understand correctly. We'll continue to monitor this, and if there's anything further, we'll bring it to the board for discussion. And the board will make a recommendation at town meeting. Okay. Article 14 would fund construction associated with the MWRA interconnection. There's three components. The first is a pump station, uh, estimated cost of $2.55 million. The second is water distribution system improvements in North Reading for $1 million. And the third is Reading water system improvements in the town of Reading required to deliver water to the town line in the amount of $4.67 million, and the board has recommended. The funding source is proposed to be uh, Water Enterprise. Sorry, what was that? Water, water Enterprise. Okay. I'm going to have um, Mr. O'Leary take articles 10, 11, 12, 13, and 14. Article 15, which is the fiscal year 2018 operating budget. Um, we had a hearing on it two weeks ago. And just a quick summary. General government operations are $25.9 million. Education, and that includes uh, all components of education, not just the public school system here in North Reading, $30.2 million. A debt service at just under $8 million. And the three enterprise funds accounting for just over $6 million. That's Water, Hillview, and Parks and Recreation. And the board has previously recommended the article. Article 16 is the capital budget. Uh, again, the board had an extensive review of this uh, two weeks ago. It has recommended the article and a lot of data on that spreadsheet, but all of this was printed in the warrant that was mailed to residents' home. It should have been received either Saturday or today. Okay. You're going to do the next five. Okay. Article 17 would appropriate funds for the facilities at Arthur J. Kenny Field. Uh, it's a code compliance issue, uh, providing public restrooms for uh, the stadium. Uh, the project has been rebid with proposals due on Thursday, June 1st. A report by the Evaluation Committee and myself will be made to the Athletic Facilities Committee and Capital Improvement Planning Committee meeting uh, scheduled for Friday afternoon, June, sec June 2nd at 3 o'clock p.m. in the Middle and High School Distance Learning Lab. I'd strongly encourage anybody who's interested in learning more about this particular project to plan to attend that afternoon meeting if they can. Uh, it's an opportunity to, to learn um, in real time uh, whatever will be known to us from the, to, from the bidding, um, and uh, all of which will be considered at the Monday evening meetings uh, immediately prior to town meeting. What time is that? Uh, 3 o'clock p.m. What's the date again? Uh, Friday, June 2nd. Article 18 would be to rescind the authorizations to borrow. Um, this would allow us to rescind any unissued balances of various bar borrowing authorizations that have been approved by the town. Um, generally, it's for amounts that are no longer needed. Uh, two items that we're looking closely at as potentially requiring uh, rescission uh, would be the middle and high school project uh, and the little school roof projects. Uh, but again, we'll know more about that as we come closer to the town meeting. Unless the finance director has anything addition to offer at this point. No, that's accurate. Thank you. 
and the board is uh, opted to make a recommendation at town meeting. Okay. Article 19 would appropriate just over $30,000 in band premiums to reduce middle and high school project borrowing costs. The board's previously recommended the article, um, and um, it just requires assignment to it, a member. So, Mrs. Mignapelli is going to take those five articles. Article 20 would fund retirement obligations in the amount of $207,179 from Raise and Appropriate, which is built into our fiscal year 2018 financial plan. The breakdown is as follows, $142,182 in general government and $64,997 for the school department, and the board has previously recommended. Article 21 would be to transfer funds to the OPEB Liability Trust Fund, the balance of which is currently $578,724. The proposal is to transfer in $300,000 from Raise and Appropriate. This was built into our financial plan and represents 100% of required deposits for new hire employees for fiscal year 2018. The board's previously recommended. Article 22 would appropriate funds for special counsel legal services. This article would provide additional funding for legal expenses related to the secondary school building project. We've appropriated $782,391 to date since 2014. We've expended $635,200 since that time. Uh, that should be a correction that reads 2013, but it should say 2014. And the balance is $147,191 from the prior appropriations with a request for $50,000 from the overlay reserve. Upcoming meeting, and the board is recommended. Just, uh, Mr. Masseri, would you mind taking articles 20 and 21? 20 and 21? Yes, sir. Okay. And then all the remaining articles I'll do. Article, so this is some background slides, which is so I'm not going to go through them again, but they just describe the, the actions to date relative to the legal actions. Article 23 would be funding the master plan as submitted by the Community Planning Commission to $85,000 from free cash. The amount may be offset by a grant award, but we won't know until after town meeting whether or not we receive funding from that. So the request will be for the full amount, and the board's previously recommended. Article 24, this is a change from the routine nature of the handling of revolving funds in the past. Uh, we're now required to approve a bylaw and to authorize the funds individually in the bylaw. So the article was amended to, to do so. Uh, we put a new slide up here that's intended to kind of summarize the, all of the work, and I know there was some discussion by the board at the last meeting about improving the transparency of these funds. So what we've done is taken the, uh, the purpose of the fund, we've added a quick summary as to, the per as to what the use is, and we'll, that, that second column should say use and not purpose. Okay. and then the amounts on the far right-hand side. And just going through them, the conservation revolving fund is uh, used for wetland protection, Damon Tavern revolving fund for the maintenance and repair of the Damon Tavern, rain barrel fund is for the purchase of rain barrels to be used by residents if they uh, elect, recycling uh, to promote recycling activities, elder affairs for uh, elder-related <coughs> programming, emergency management for the cleanup of hazardous materials, Youth services for the youth department salaries and or expenses. Library activity room for the upkeep and maintenance of the library. And the Board of Health for any immunization expenses for emergency or other uh, immunization clinics. Yes, Ms. So those amounts that you've listed out on the column are the maximum amount that the fund's capped at, right? Mm -hmm. I'm not sure that if it's capped on the receipt or the expenditure side. I believe it's capped in the expenditure side. And I think when we mentioned this before, I think, and I think this came up at town meeting last last year's t annual town meeting. Um, can you also do a column that shows what receipts came in and what was expended <coughs> out for the purposes? Can you do something like that? I think the column, the columns listed as receipts in up to that maximum can be 
put into that fund. It's a capped fund. We can we can add additional detail. Yeah, we'll probably I break it into a few slides. Yeah, right. Or are you saying these are the amounts that are currently in there? No, th these yeah. are the authorizations yeah. to expend, as I understand the way the law is Oh, now. I see. Okay. But th those are not actual balances. So we could certainly add that information, though, based on the historical trend. Right. But there's also a cap, right, to, to how much can go into each cap. of these? It goes, it, it kind of goes hand in hand. So there's all the funds that get a dollar, spend a dollar. So without having, you know, received the revenue, you can't, you know, expend. So <coughs> these are the expenditure caps. However, it, it also really, we're not going to have more in there. Um, that's one of the reasons why Parks and Rec ended up becoming an enterprise fund, because their receipts and expenditures were, were too high, um, you know, coming in annually. And they were capped at how much they could, okay. you know, bring in, and then that the excess was closing to the general fund. So, okay. But if you'd like to see a summary of, um, you know, receipts received to date or within the fiscal year <coughs> and the expenditures, we we can do something, some type of table. Maybe the prior fiscal year, so it'll be a complete right. year. Right. <coughs> There's no further questions. Uh, Article 25 relates to the regulation of drones. Uh, the board has previously recommended the article. As we went through the summary, the federal government regulates the use and operation of unmanned aircraft systems, commonly known as drones. The FAA maintains exclusive jurisdiction over regulating the airways of the United States under federal law. The use of unmanned aircraft systems is subject to significant federal regulation by the FAA, including the licensing and operational requirements. There's currently not any Massachusetts state law directly addressing the drone issue. Under the municipalities, under a municipality's police power, communities may, under limited circumstances, regulate the use of drones, including addressing privacy and public safety <coughs> concerns. This proposed drone bylaw would seek to utilize the town's police powers to protect its citizens from invasions of privacy, potential trespassers, and address safety issues presented by careless drone operations, which are not otherwise the subject to federal law. The federal and state laws applicable to draw drones, as well as case law interpreting the permiss permissible regulations and use of drones throughout the nation, continue to evolve and as the use of such systems continues to increase. Uh, and this is something that was recommended to uh, the board by the police chief um, based on uh, um, prior, experience, uh, prior experiences and some concerns with regard to the potential for uh, complaints coming to the department in the future. And as I mentioned, the board has previously recommended. Okay. Article 26 relates to the uh, snow removal bylaw. Uh, the bylaw would, th this amendment to the bylaw would strengthen the existing bylaw to promote greater compliance, it would update the standard for acceptable practices to address snow and ice removal, it raises the fine to $300 per day and allows for the issuance of a fine on a first offense rather than the existing warning and $50 then $100 fine requirement. And it allows the town to be able to recover the cost of snow and ice removal uh, and, to, and the fines uh, from property owners. And the board has previously recommended by a four to one vote. Article 27. The zoning bylaw amendment relative to the Main Street mixed use overlay. And Mr. Chairman, through you at the moment, I'd like to turn it over to the town planner for a presentation which was offered at the hearing held by the Community Planning Commission last Tuesday, I believe. Uh, can I turn this off and turn on a different yeah, absolutely. presentation? Yeah, sure. Um, this is a zoning amendment um, <clears throat> for Main Street, mixed, uh, Main Street Mixed Use Overlay District. Um, the purpose, the main purpose
purpose of this proposal um, is to revitalize a key central area of the Main Street corridor, which um, extends into the beginning of Winter Street uh, to encourage downtown style development. It would allow for some residential development as a component of mixed use development, and that includes uh, multifamily housing and senior living and age restricted housing. Um, having residential development close to commercial development is an essential part of supporting the kind of retail and restaurant use we would like to see in this area of Main Street. And this is a follow-up action to um, uh, the MAPC short-term economic development study for Main Street done in 2015, um, which is to bring some housing to a central area of Main Street in order to support business activity and increase vibrancy. It introduces some residential development in a limited area without opening up the entire Main Street corridor to housing. Last October at town meeting, the CPC presented a warrant article to adjust the zoning in highway business. And the zoning amendments were based on recommendations from that MAPC plan. The focus of that plan was the stretch of Main Street running from approximately Nickel Street to the UPS facility um, on both sides of the street. And that's illustrated in that uh, cover illustration from the study and running eastward down Winter Street for two parcels. Um, however, the CPC felt that most of the zoning change recommendations from that study would be beneficial for the entire Main Street corridor. So that was how they were presented and passed in October. One exception to this was the recommendation that multifamily housing be incorporated into the zoning. Um, that was a big recommendation from the study. The CPC had initially considered allowing residential development um, as a component of mixed use projects throughout Main Street. Um, however, we came to the conclusion that this might introduce too much residential too quickly. Therefore, the Main Street mixed use overlay is now being proposed to introduce multifamily residential development, including age restricted and senior housing to a select area of Main Street only, at least to start. The geographic area for the rezoning um, was based on feedback received at the community forum, uh, which was done as part of MAPC's economic development study for Main Street. Other blocks to the north, south, and west were also important, but the rationale was to introduce the zoning change in a smaller area to start and possibly to expand it at a later date. Um, so attendees to the uh, forum for the project were asked to vote on which blocks they would like to see developed first. Some of them were really blocks that we were not going to be um, hopeful of seeing too much development on, such as the postal facility, but others um, were a little bit more highly rated, and that was um, largely where this um, rezoning effort was focused first. So this is the target area um, for the current zoning overlay as it's being proposed by the CPC. And you'll see that this does not include all of the blocks studied in the MAPC plan, um, but it does include the highest priority areas with the exception of the postal facility. The zoning changes are intended as additions to allowed uses so that property owners would be given greater options for, um, <clears throat> for development and are not intended to limit options or move out any existing businesses, only enhance development opportunities. This area proposed for rezoning also coincides with the target area for, Main Street, for the Main Street Wastewater Package Plant study. And depending on the outcome of that study and the development options it reveals, the CPC may propose an expanded area for wastewater and rezoning. The exact number of new residential units that could be added to this area is dependent on many factors, including the size of any units proposed, the wastewater treatment options the developer chooses to pursue, and whether property owners have um, <coughs> the desire to redevelop their properties in this way. However, we do know from the MAPC market analysis that the estimated number of units that could be absorbed by the market in this area would be between 130 and 172 dwelling units. The area proposed for rezoning is significantly smaller than that, though, um, than what was looked in the study. So we would not expect to see a complete build out of that based on this rezoning. The market analysis concluded that the area could reasonably absorb an additional 43,000 square feet of retail, including 10 stores and six restaurants. It also emphasized that, quote, the clustering of adjacent uses and developments is crucial to the success of desired uses, such as retail shops, restaurants, and offices. Specifically, many types of retail depend on the roofs of nearby households in order to tap into unspent disposable household income. The potential for these market supportable uses to thrive is less if they are developed separately in single use standalone buildings. That is the rationale for adding housing um, to commercial development areas in, on this part of Main Street. Parking and building coverage, um, parking requirements would be two spaces per unit, which is consistent with townwide requirements in most zoning districts. Uh, building coverage on each lot remains at 70% maximum uh, with a 30% open space requirement. 
uh, the limit limitations proposed to residential, um, multifamily or senior housing and age-restricted uses would be allowed but limited to 80% of the total building area on a given parcel, and the remaining 20% would need to be another use allowed by right or by special permit in highway business. Um, the proposed 80-20 split is based on the current zoning regulations, which allow a 60-foot height limit. Um, the maximum number of stories would be estimated at five stories based on a 60-foot building height. One floor, the ground floor only, would be assumed to be dedicated to retail office or another commercial use with the remaining floors above up to four stories of residential. Retail um, was thought to be unlikely in second floor spaces and all floors were estimated to be the same size, which is where we came up with the 80%, 20% split. So for example, if you were to do you know, five stories allowed by zoning, 80% residential, 20% other, if you were to have a four story building, could potentially be 75% residential, 25% um, other. Three stories could be 67% residential, 33% other, and two stories would be about 50-50. So we talked a little bit um, at, when I last was here about how we came up with the 80-20. I, I hadn't really been prepared to speak about um, how we came to that figure, but it was based on the current zoning. So I'm just giving some examples of um, the kinds of projects where we would see different, different splits. Um, the CPC, since um, the board last discussed this, the CPC held their public hearing on uh, May 16th. The CPC voted to recommend the article, but with the following changes. Um, <clears throat> they, they would like to see multifamily housing allowed as a special permit use and not by right. Um, the age restricted or senior housing could be allowed by right. In section 200-60 um, items A and B, they wanted to just clarify <coughs> by adding to the words some other use allowed by right or special permit, the words in, highway, in the highway business zoning district, just to clarify that only uses already allowed in highway business would be acceptable for the remaining 20% of the non-residential building area. Um, and then they, we, they were likely looking at changing the distance between buildings, which is currently at twice the required si side yard setback or 50 feet, um, lowering that number to 30 feet, but that's going to be based on um, feedback received from the fire department and building department. Um, so that concludes my presentation. Um, so I will close this. Oh. Mrs. Mini Pelly. <laughs> Just, Danielle, just a quick question. I think, I don't think I asked you this when you did the prior presentation. What do you consider open space to be? Roof, um, parking lot, what, what would be open, 30% open space be? It, it would just be unconstructed space, so just not, not a building. Okay. Yeah, it's, it's really a, a building coverage number, um, what's left after buildings are covering oh, okay. space. It's not like green space then, it's just um, something different that... Not exactly, although the Main Street overlay, which is not a zoning overlay, but it's with the site plan review, actually does require quite a bit of green space as part of the site plan review process. The CPC does sometimes need to waive that if a development's not possible, but it has actually pretty stringent, much more than the zoning requires, um, okay. open space, land, landscaped green space requirements for that. Mr. Masir. During the uh, discussion we had a couple of weeks ago, I think Mr. O'Leary had brought up the issue zoning on both sides of the street. Was that discussed during the uh, public hearing? It was. I did bring it up at the public hearing. I did share some of the feedback from the board. I went to the hearing and did share that. But uh, the CPC's response to that was they sort of want to take this walk before you can run approach. They want to take this in a smaller chunk. Let's see how it goes. Maybe learn, get some lessons learned from it and then do this again. Just because we're doing it once doesn't mean we can't do it again. No, I, I understood that. That's, 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 that and that was, I believe, if I'm saying anything incorrectly, please stop me, but I believe that was their, their sense as a committee, mm -hmm. uh, as a board, that they felt pretty strongly, let's, let's take a smaller chunk, let's see how it goes, build some lessons learned, and then go out and do this again to add more parcels as we go along. Mr. Schultz. Yeah, one concern I had, I know we're trying to get light parcels for the initial rollout of this plan. I noticed the stop and shop plan is, the uh, stop and shop lot is, you know, five times the size of the next nearest size lot. Is there any talk excluding the stop and shop lot from the initial rollout to kind of, so we have like similar size properties when we first start yeah. this? I, I actually, we've ha I've had some discussion with all the board members, I believe, on this subject, and I think it's something I would like to discuss tonight. 
town administrator and I have had some discussion on this as well. Um, I don't know if Michael, you want to jump in now and maybe share some of your thoughts, or you want me to just continue? I, I just to recap what I heard at the board's last discussion of this and what I understood might have come up as a result of the Warren article hearing last Tuesday evening. Um, you know, there's a sense that there was a lot of likeness in many of the parcels, both in terms of their size and in terms of their uh, proximity, in terms of the proximity for development that might be street front development, you know, within a close proximity to the existing Main Street and to a lesser extent the Winter, uh, Winter Street corridor. Um, you know, this parcel certainly is a, a much larger parcel with the potential for development that might not necessarily be um, contributing in the way to the streetscape itself. Right. Uh, and I think that that was an area for concern for, uh, so, that I've heard some concern about. So, same, and I had the same concern, and I thought, based on that, and kind of going along with your approach, maybe take this in smaller chunks and see how it goes, I would like to us to consider removing that map out map 24 parcel 36 out of this zoning overlay district for now give it some let's see how it goes without it and then maybe add it in the future uh, once we've again learned some lessons from this approach and I I'll defer to members of the CPC I think for that question so I'm going to bring this up here If I may, Mr. Chim. Yes, please. Uh, just a couple quick comments. One of the one of the issues I see with taking the largest the largest piece out is it may take some of the impetus away from uh, substantial development. Um, in other words, it, if if we're looking at a situation where we would like to see these properties to cooperate in a way, uh, especially in the way of wastewater, if you take the largest parcel out, the smaller parcels may not cumulatively be able to support a wastewater system. So I think that was one of the, that's one of the concerns I had with that. I do understand that there's a, um, um, there might be an advantage to holding that big piece aside to do something comprehensive with it, but um, I do think it will damage the uh, ability of those other projects to go along in any, in any uh, larger fashion. Uh, however, I wouldn't say that I'm opposed to it because I do understand the intent to it. But I just want to make the point that it will affect sure. those other property, d the developments in those other properties. And I was actually, uh, Mr. Pierce, same thing you were thinking about. I was looking at it from the other side of the coin, and then I thought the large property would dominate what the little guys were trying to do, and they would dictate what's done on Main Street. Or I was thinking the same thing you were thinking, just from the different side of the mm -hmm. street. But I, your point's well taken. Yeah. Thank you. Mr. Minnie Pelly, please. And just in that regard, what, is there any progress or update on that study that was being done with regard to wastewater treatment? Um, the RFP hasn't gone out yet. It's gone through some iterations of um, changing and evolving. Um, it would probably be better to have, a z have zoning in place before that because the study costs money and the zoning really doesn't. So if, for example, the zoning proposal <coughs> wasn't well received, we would at least have better direction for okay. that study just because it's, we, we really only have one crack at it, so right. we, we want to get it right based on the zoning that is actually realistic. Mm. Well, I'd, I'd like us to consider, at least from the board, I'd like the board at least make a recommendation that we remove that Map 24, parcel 36 from this overlay district again, because it is so large and it is so set back, and it really doesn't fit in line with what we were originally trying to achieve, and that is, you know, to build more of a streetscape concept along Route 28. Well, that's set so far back, and then you got to tie in also. We're talking about an 80-20 split, which has another concern of mine, and. I am definitely more in favor of a 67-33 only because you're talking such a significant effect on the school systems with allowing 80 percent. That means four floors of a structure with housing that could resonate more children. Um, and I know and I love that you're using your concept where you're making them come in and see you for a special permit. Mm -hmm. You can maybe try to control some of that. It does certainly make me feel better. Mm -hmm. But the 80-20 still has me concerned. I'm just curious what my board members think on the 80-20, and if you're comfortable with that. 
I think it's more desirable to a developer if you go 80-20. Um, I guess I have to see what the appetite is for those parcels. I guess we will determine what the demand is out there. One question I had just to kind of dovetail on what we were just speaking about. The wastewater options that we're looking at right now, if someday we were able to put sewer up down 28, how would those types of options tie into what would be a new sewer? Well, we, we have a district. Well, it depends on how we do sewer, so that, that can be difficult to answer. If we, in fact, sewer 28 and tie into GLSD, for example, that's Greater Lawrence Sewer District, then um, it would certainly enhance those projects greatly if that's something that we could do. Uh, and I don't know, th there has been some talk of that on how far down the road it is. But what we were looking at with these parcels is to develop a wastewater system within either within the parcels or to use the site that we already have approved at the DPW site where the town could be involved and um, and if we could get enough development there uh, it might be possible to because it's so close it's yeah. so close to these parcels that you could that your costs although it is not inexpensive it would not be that it would not be out of the realm of possibility um, just a quick comment on your on yeah. taking the stop and shop out um, I mean, I, again, I, I wouldn't be opposed to that, but we would certainly, it certainly uh, supports what Danielle said, that we really need to get the zoning in place and see what we got to work with before we go without that RFP, because uh, it would be, it might be uh, looked at a whole lot differently with that large parcel removed. It still leaves you with nine other parcels. I understand from an acreage standpoint it's a little different, yeah. but it still gives you nine to work with. Right. Uh, it seems like that's a, a reasonable number to start with. And again, going along with your concept, mm -hmm. you're going you know, to walk before you can run. I'd feel a little bit more, a lot more comfortable taking that parcel out. And especially with an 80 20, if we're going to continue forward with that. And I, and I get it from a property owner, uh, com commercial property owner. Yeah, of course you want to maximize your square footage going up. But we also have to, you know, Mr. Masseri knows better than anyone, you know, to send one kid to school is about 15, maybe even 16,000, approaching that 15, 16,000 dollar per kid range, and we could actually end up with a negative effect here. Right. So by taking out this larger parcel, maybe consider doing a 67, 33, because we can always go up down the road. As we learn, like get some lessons learned, if we don't see that we get a lot of interest in it under the smaller requirements then we can come back and do a future overlay district and increase them and then the ones that they haven't done a development allow them to go to the next level if we decide to go to the 80 20 or what's the, you know the 75 mm -hmm. 24 it was I, I again I just want to stick with that concept let's walk before we can run let's try it in small out chunks I asked the board to consider that it's Menu I, I'm, I was one of, uh, actually, Mr. O'Leary and I were the two that thought it should be expanded to the other side of the road, that whole corridor. So, and I know we voted, Mr. Chairman, to recommend a town meeting, but we also don't have Mr. O'Leary here who, again, wanted to expand it. So are we taking another vote tonight or waiting until town meeting to consider so, that with all these options so i talked to mr o'leary about this and i think he, he and i are certainly on the same page in regards to this parcel okay. he agreed that taking it out would make him feel a little bit better even though and he did buy in on the fact that this understanding now that your approach was that this won't be the last one we do mm -hmm. you know that was his concern was you know you do this and we don't do anything for the next 15 years uh, and since now he knows that maybe even next year we may bring this up mm -hmm. next year in June or maybe even October next year. I think he felt a lot more comfortable. But he was certainly 100% in agreement with me on this particular parcel at 97 Main Street. And I, I would yes. just add one more thing. To, to, and again, I'm just one of five of us, but I would, I would keep, prefer to keep it in because it's like it's potentially likely with this whole grouping that that's the one that's possibly going to be the one that's interested in the zoning modifications and what can be done with their parcel. I could be wrong about that, but that's likely to be the one that takes advantage of this. Yeah, but I'm not, my, my thought is along with the town administrators is that we don't believe it achieves what we were looking to achieve. I understand what mm -hmm. you're saying from 
you know, an economic development standpoint mm-hmm. for them. Mm-hmm. Economically, they would love it. But are we achieving what we were trying to set out, and that is that street skates concept, I don't think it helps us achieve that goal. I think it actually may hurt us. And then in addition to this, I mean, this is a significant parcel. You could be talking a tremendous amount of residential, massive impact here. And I just rather think before we go ahead and approve this, pay, take that particular parcel out, let us study a little more. Let's see how these other nine parcels go under this concept, under, under this overlay district. And then maybe next year we, we do bring that one up and put it back on the table. Uh, because it's a lot harder to go backwards once we approve this at town meeting. So Mr. Masseri had his hands up first, so Mr. Schultz, and then I'm going to let Mr. Pierce the go. The question after. I, I yes. have is, has anyone looked at those specific lots from the point of view of what's there and what's the probability of the owners or of these particular lots taking advantage of this? You know, I, I think of Kitties, which has been there for how long? A million years. Yeah. Um, I would have to allow the CPC members just to answer that. Just wondering if anyone's looked at that. I don't know if this is the bell of answer. Some of the, we have, I, I did reach out to um, a number of the owners in that area. Some were less interested than others. Um, all of them seem to be at least willing to have the property studied in terms of the wastewater. I think they would be interested to hear whether more was possible um, if, they were, if we did a package plant. Um, in terms of the desire to, to um, introduce residential to those particular properties. The only property owner so far that I've heard from who actually really was very interested was um, the, the um, Mr. Heffron who owns 66 and 68 Winter Street yeah. um, for the property that's been for sale for a while. Um, they have been developing a concept plan for a, a modest sized mixed use, I should say small, three story mixed use um, building. And I have not <coughs> heard from anyone else that there are any plans for development and no one else has come to us to ask that residential be added specifically um, but everyone was interested to hear and what we might come up with I don't think people are too concerned with we're adding a use that's allowed I think they would be very concerned um, if we were taking something away but um, and, you know that's 2.24 acres mm -hmm. I think that's a nice size to see how this goes it's a nice sample size to see how this plays along for the next year or so and again, like I said, we can add this parcel. We can ask. We can add 97 Main Street next year if you know we kind of see what we like. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Schultz, and then I'm going to allow Mr. Pierce. Please. I just think it's important we roll this out that we're we're dealing with similar, similarly sized parcels and not this big thing and this little one. They should all be roughly. I mean, they're never exactly the same, but roughly in the same ballpark, so you can get see what kind of appetite's out there. Mm. I think I'm concerned that the big parcel will dominate any type of uh, right commercial growth and dictate yeah, to the other absolutely. ones who's going to come in there. That's my concern. Uh, I agree with you. Mr. Pierce. Yes, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, as I said, I, I, I don't know if any of the other board members have any opposition to taking the big parcel out, but I don't, I don't really because I understand what you're trying to do, and I, I understand what Mr. Schultz is saying, so that there's, a, there's certainly a, a possibility that that we would need a pretty firm decision on that, though. <laughs> a firm decision so that when we go to town meeting, we can get a vote so we can move the rest of this project along a little without stalling it. Um, the only other, the other thing I would like to just comment on is that 80-20. Um, I understand uh, what you're trying to do with that. You're trying to try to limit the amount of residential in there. But the plain fact is you're really not going to get much uh, commercial development above the first floor. So if you make it impossible for somebody who would certainly put first floor development uh, commercial in and then some housing above it, you probably get no responses from anybody because the common knowledge is that you don't get commercial of any uh, consequence that would pay any money anyway for that second floor. So uh, the 80-20 that we chose was chose from a strictly practical point of view to make sure that what we were offering to developers was something they were familiar with, something they would build. I, and I can agree with the 80-20 with the other 16 acreage, that roughly 16 to 17 acres with those other nine properties. Mm -hmm. But when you add in 21.19 to the 16, that's a pretty significant jump. Well, if we're taking that one out, then uh, we, I think that, that we do need to leave the 80-20 in. Good. I, and I would be more comfortable with okay. that. So basically you're looking at five floors for 80-20. Well, yeah, they, they, but whether but they actually build five floors or not, and I believe the Heffron right. was looking at three floors, and so you've got to get pretty much what you want. Right. 
Can you pass the microphone to Mr. Bellavance, please? Uh, he's going to have to come down here. I don't know how long the floor is. It slides. It's good. It'll move. Yeah, I definitely uh, just, you know, repeat what, uh, what Warren had to say is, um, yeah, I'd be definitely willing to pull that parcel off, but that the, the 2080 was definitely it's a hard number. And I'm a lot more comfortable with it if we pull that parcel out. Absolutely. I would be 100% in, in agreement with that. So what's the steps we have to go through? So through you, Mr. Chairman, the warrant has been printed and mailed uh, as submitted by the Planning Commission. It would need to be amended on the floor of town meeting either by motion of the selectmen or by motion of the Planning Commission. And then accordingly, uh, any recommendations would need to be made um, to town meeting on re in regard to the amended motion. Okay. So Sounds good. It, it may, may be helpful. I, I don't know if we want to inquire of the co Planning Commission whether they want to make the amended motion or not, um, where they are the sponsor. And if they don't, then the board could consider it. Mr. Bellavent. I know we do have some amended motions already, maybe just adding that to that, um, to what we already have. That would be right. Great. Okay. So we One. can work together to, on the motion, and the board can report its recommendation on the floor town meeting. We're on to Article 28 then. Yes. And we already did 28, so I think we're good. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. I want to thank again the CPC members for making the time out of your busy schedule to be here tonight. And I uh, want to congratulate Mr. Bellavance on being the chairman now of the CPC. Thank and who's your vice chair? Oh, Warren. Oh, Warren. Excellent. Okay. Be, great. Uh, That's great. Bill, oh, yeah. No, I'm sure you handle it. Oh, <laughs> I have a lot of confidence. I think they made it, you guys made a great selection. So best of luck. Any more? I'm going to close the public hearing on this unless there's uh, any other questions. Okay. Sorry. No. We're good. Uh, we're going to close the public hearing. Okay. Next subject is going to be we're going to discuss the Merrimack Valley Regional Transportation Authority, and the, I'm going to ask the board to just give the town administrator and I a few minutes to present to you about three slides in this subject, and then I want to ask you to consider taking a vote after we run through this short presentation. Liz. I just didn't want you to put your foot down. I didn't know if you know. Okay. So on May 1st, the town administrator, myself, Representative Jones, Mary Perenni, Daniel <coughs> McKnight, uh, Jeff Ewell, we attended a meeting with the <coughs> Merrimack Valley Regional Transportation Authority. And, you know, when we started out a few years ago, going out and getting the community compact under the governor's plan to help and assist towns do certain things, and transportation has always been an issue for the town of North Reading. Uh, Mrs. McKnight has gone out and achieved by getting us some grant money to do some research to improve our transportation options or looking and invest what we can invest our transportation uh, dollars on for future opportunity since everyone knows we can't get the ride here and the MBTA is a already a little overwhelmed enterprise so we're probably never going to get to see that come through here but as you know we spend $102,000 a year investing in the MBTA. So we had those discussions, and uh, Representative Jones, he's the one that informed us uh, about the potential opportunities that we could have with Merrimack Valley Regional Transportation. So we met with them. We met with their uh, lead administrator, um, Mr. I believe it's Constan Constanzo. Constanzo. Constanzo, thank you. Oh, well, there it is on the slide. So, Mr. M Town Administrator, if, um, you want to sure. run through these slides and then? Yeah, I'm, I'm happy to. Uh, as, you, right. as you indicated, uh, we have a, uh, a tremendous opportunity uh, for expanding uh, or providing some, expanding the transportation that we provide now 
um, for paratransit services here in town through the Merrimack Valley Regional Transit Authority. And I, I cannot stress enough the efforts of Representative Brad Jones to put us in touch with the statewide association of regional transit authorities, who then in turn referred us to the Merrimack Valley Regional Transit Authority. Um, uh, we uh, arranged an introductory meeting which took place here three weeks ago, um, attended by the individuals that are identified on the slide here, with the goal of determining um, whether or not a curb-to-curb -curb transportation service option could be afforded to North Reading residents. Um, effectively, what we identified is, and this is some description about how it would work, but through a change in the law that was uh, signed into law last legislative session, the um, a, a city or town is able to effectively add transportation services through a regional transit authority such as the Merrimack Valley Regional Transit Authority um, by vote of the Board of Selectmen. And so this evening we have a motion in the packet asking the board to vote to submit an application to and if accepted join the Merrimack Valley Regional Transit Authority. In the case of North Reading, we pay approximately $100,000 to the MBTA as a state assessment for uh, membership of the, in the MBTA. And that's prescribed by state law. Um, it used to be a much larger number, but through the efforts of our legislative delegation led by Representative Jones, it was reduced over time to that number that it is at now. And um, the advantage to this potential option is that, as it's been presented to us, the town can take a portion of that state assessment to the MBTA and as effectively assign it directly to the Merrimack Valley Regional Transit Authority to provide regional paratransit services for our residents here in North Reading. So the MBTA, I'm going to use round numbers, uh, well maybe I shouldn't use round numbers, but whatever, whatever cost it may come to, uh, as, as, so long as it were less than $100,000, which we believe is highly likely to be the case based on our discussions. Uh, we would effectively pay for it by reducing the amount paid to the MBTA. So there's no net <coughs> impact to the town in terms of the cost. And we felt that that was something that made this very appealing. Um, as I think Selectman Prisco identified, there have been years of conversations ongoing with the MBTA to get the ride, uh, which is the uh, most commonly known paratransit service here in North Reading. Um, and as close as we've been able to get, the very difficult winter of 2015, proved to be too much for the MBTA and uh, they were unable to consider further expansion of their services and instead need to focus and very publicly have had needed to focus on the investment in their existing infrastructure. So it's a tremendous opportunity for the town to provide this service and uh, I have to give a, a ton of credit to uh, the senior center, uh, Mary Prenny in particular for identifying the need um, and to uh, Danielle McKnight, the town planner who was here this evening for her efforts as well regarding uh, managing the community compact grant program that we have to try to research a, a different uh, avenues, which will be very important for us as we go through deciding what the uh, services we want to offer are going to be. Um, we have a survey that's gone out in the tax bills, uh, or will be going out, that will be going out in the tax bill that residents will be asked to uh, provide their opinion relative to the need. It's also going to go in the senior center's uh, uh, news bulletin. And uh, effectively, we intend to take that information and to uh, review it with the Merrimack Valley Regional Transit Authority in order to identify the best services that would be available to us. Um, there is a pamphlet that uh, is in the packet that describes how their uh, so-called ring and ride program works, where you call a centralized dispatch at the Merrimack Valley Regional Transit Authority to book transportation uh, in advance. Um, the MBRTA is hiring new operators and are purchasing new vans. They've indicated that they would have the capacity to be able to provide paratransit services here in North Reading to whatever extent we wish to offer it. Um, they recommended uh, to start with whatever the core need is, which we believe is the elderly and disabled, and that, that is our intention. Um, we could opt to join the MVRTA and for whatever reason decide that we don't want to pursue services and we're not obligated to pursue those services. But a vote of the board this evening will allow us to submit notice to the Merrimack Valley Regional Transit Authority for their board to consider accepting our application at their upcoming meeting, which I believe is within the next week. Right. Uh, that will start a dialogue uh, in what will probably be informal over the course of the summer and more formally in the fall. Uh, but a another tremendous advantage is that we have the ability to potentially uh, receive these services beginning in the middle of this upcoming fiscal year.
which is a tremendous timeline. So uh, all around, I believe, a tremendous opportunity. Um, we have some detail in the presentation relative to what the program would look like. Uh, I would suggest maybe we could dive a little bit further into that as we go along the planning effort. Um, but uh, ultimately, it, it's a tremendous opportunity to provide transportation, uh, which is sorely uh, in need here in, uh, in town. That's great. Any questions? For that? Yes, a good question. I mean, this is obviously a no-brainer, but <laughs> would this also give us the opportunity to have, like, say, a commuter bus to a MBTA station that would be within the end, Merrimack Valley? <laughs> I believe Selectman Prisco may have brought that up in the conversation, and, and the short answer is that that's a potential option. Yes. Yeah. The answer um, is yes. You know, we, yeah. we could. They said that. they would work with us to do that, mm -hmm. um, but again, you know, we have to probably do a little more study finding a location, but at least they'd be willing to uh, to do that. So and if we could park their car and take yeah. the bus to the train station. Yep. And if we wanted to, we could have one of those situations where we could identify a location in town to have a park and ride lot potentially have people pay to park there, but use those funds to help us offset any of these expenses mm -hmm. that will come along with the parking ride. We have a lot of, the nice thing about this is we have a lot of options. And having that $102,000 that was, we've already allocated anyway for this, to have the, the deduct from that and the offset of that, it, it's like you said, it's really a no-brainer. And if we add a park and ride with a fee, we should be able to self-fund this very easily without any impact to the taxpayers in town and add it, bring in a service that we've much needed for such a long time. And, you know, I just want to foot stomp one thing, though. As we go through this program, one of the things that they emphasize is that this is not an entitlement program. I want to say that right up front. And we're going to have to make sure when we structure this that people understand, that, you know, it isn't something that, you know, everybody gets. You know, you can't have 21-year-old kids giving a call for a curb-to-curb -curb ride to get to a pub crawl. It's not going to be that type of a service. This is really for our seniors, and I know it's, a, but it's, but you have to say it. It's not an entitlement program. We want to use these funds effectively, mainly to help our senior community who can't commute themselves around. This is an opportunity for them to get to appointments. Uh, the other thing we did ask in some of the meetings was about the types of vans. And there are going to be vans that have lifts, they will have somebody on the buses that will assist, not lift, but assist to get people on and off safely. So, um, but we'll work out more of those details as we go along. I don't know if there's another slide you had there. There is, yes. Uh, and I, again, Selectman, thank you for putting the presentation together. Uh, just to summarize, you know, we can join at any time. Um, we can take the policy action just to join, which is what is being asked of the board this evening at no cost and no financial commitment, and then work out the details for additional services based on uh, whatever feedback we receive from the survey, from the assistance from the Community Compact Program, as well as the feedback from the Senior Center. And again, to your comments earlier, with a focus on the elderly and disabled. Yeah. That's where we started this conversation yep. multiple years ago. That's where the focus will, will remain. Sure. Um, with the Board of Directors going to summer break in July and August, we were recommended to vote uh, as soon as we could. Uh, we had hoped to be able to provide the board a more informal update at the last meeting, but unfortunately, we had a lengthy meeting that evening. We weren't able to. Uh, Mr. Misery. So, us voting this evening, right, does not commit the town to any financial until downstream when we have more information and we basically sign up for some portion or all of the services they provide, is that how that works? That is our understanding based on the feedback both from the Regional Transit Authority uh, at the state level as well as from the Merrimack Valley Regional Transit Authority. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Mr. Maseri, the most important thing why we have to vote tonight is, as you can see that last bullet, they do take a summer break for July and August. So by us getting this approved tonight that we want to do it, at least gets it into the Board of Directors' hands with the MVRTA and to see how we can go ahead and start structuring a more formal program before they leave in July. Maybe over the time while they're gone, we'll, they'll have something back in our plate for us to make some final decisions on, to have it back to them submitted at the end of August to try to get something running maybe around the September, October time frame and probably get the last uh, six to seven months of our fiscal year uh, So I guess my next question is, 
we start a new fiscal year, we put 100000 plus in the budget for the MBTA. When do we pay that? Um, I'd have to ask the finance director how they charge the assessment against us. Mm -hmm. Uh, but I know that the actual assessment that we would experience actually runs two years in arrears. So they look at the cost actually from two years prior and then assess. It's kind of like the, veterans, the way the veterans' benefits work. But uh, our understanding is that we would not need to identify any new funding source in order to affect this, even if mid-year during this fiscal year. And one thing I want to point out in the first slide, you maybe not, we didn't see it. It's taken them about two years to balance out the offsets with the MBTA. So we'll have our money committed, we'll have our money paid, we're gonna be way ahead of the time those offsets get balanced out anyway, which works more into our advantage, not the MVRTA. Um, it, along the way though, they're gonna be providing us reports upon request. We're gonna probably be doing quarterly reports regardless, and if we wanna get reports more frequently than quarterly or semi-annually, they'd be more than happy to do that. Um, is that what you heard as well? Yes. So we're going to have a lot of insight, but again, getting the offsets settled with the MBTA and the MVRTA, it's about two-year lag. Are they both roughly the same lag, both agencies? Well, they're, they're working together. Okay, so they're still on the same cycle? Uh, I'm not certain how the MBTA levies its assessment. I couldn't say either way. Yeah. That I don't know. It sounds like, though, that the state is controlling the whole but, process. But they may be controlling how the offsets get paid off to MVTA, MVRTA, but where our services won't be getting held up. And we'll know through those reports how much we're spending so we don't exceed that 102 or I mean, if we come close to it, we'll know, and um, we can be able to manage it. But when we're talking about $25 on average, a ride in each direction, that's a lot of rides. And the folks over that we spoke with from the MVRTA didn't feel that we would have any issue. And then whatever is balanced left over stays with the MBTA. That's correct. We do not keep it. It stays with them. Okay. So on, I don't want spending the same amount of money either way. If we exceed Absolutely. the hundred thousand dollars, then, then we we have to pay for it. But that's why, that's why Bob, over the next several months, quarterly reports, monthly reports. You're right. We can discuss. Do we want to charge a fee? Do we want to charge a five dollar fee? Like just a simple five bucks. That actually gets paid to MVRTA, and then they deduct that from the off before they submit the offset. So we can do those things, but maybe we don't have to do it this year. Maybe even not next year. But as this becomes more popular and we see more usage, maybe we institute it in a year or two from now. That's what's nice about this. We get, so we get lots the of flexibility. So $25 charge, just kind of an average charge? It's an average. I asked okay. the question. They said, you know, don't hold us to it, but on average, each way, it's $25 each way. So round trip is about $50. Um, they need to get to Leahy Clinic in Burlington. They get picked up here, they get driven there, it's $25 and then $25 to get back. We want to put a $5 fee on each side of that or $2.50 on each side of that. That's up to us to try to offset them. I, I don't think it's necessary for us to decide that now. I think we see what the usage is. We see uh, how the community takes advantage of this opportunity before we institute anything like that. That would be my recommendation. I think we're a little ahead of ourselves. To really narrow that down, but it is certainly something that we have the option to do. Any other questions on this subject? Anybody from the community? Ms. Mullen, would you mind just coming to a mic? I'm sorry, and just state your name. Peter Mullen, 29 Abbott Road. I think, like you said, it's a no brainer. We're not getting, it, getting anything right now for the 102,000. Uh, the group act that we're on with Rich Walmer and working with Danielle, this is a, a, such a super you know, effort to go forward with, with what we've been looking at. Please, anything you can do is just vote it yeah. in tonight and, and move on with it. And thank you to all of you, Danielle, and yeah. to the selectmen. I'd be more than today. happy to come meet and bring these slides and present them to your no, group as well. No, that'd be great. Well. Thank you. We're excited about it. So We're thank excited you. too. Anything you do is better than what we've got now. Just kind of cover yeah. Got it. Chair, would you like to entertain a motion? I would, unless the town administrator has anything else on the subject. Yeah, one last note that the little engine that could 
which is the Council on Aging. They've done a tremendous job yes. with limited resources to Absolutely. try to fill in the gaps for folks. Um, Mary, um, uh, until her untimely passing, Michelle, we have two part-time fan drivers as well up there who've done a tremendous job making the services available uh, to the extent that they can with the limited resources that the townspeople have been able to provide them. And uh, I know that it's highly valued by those who take advantage of it, whether it be to uh, appointments, shopping, or to uh, special events here in town. Uh, I don't want that to go to un unnoticed, but uh, I think that we all agree that working cooperatively, there's a tremendous opportunity here to really expand the transportation options available here in North Reading. But I, again, I want to recognize the Senior Center and say thank you to Mary and her, her staff. Okay, I'll, I'll take a motion, please. Okay. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I move that the Town of North Reading join Merrimack Valley Regional Transit Authority and authorize the Town Administrator to complete any documentation required for application and membership. Do I have a second? Second. Second, second by Mr. Mignopelli. Any more discussion? None? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous, uh, well, four and oh, one absent. I'd like to ask if we could go to 10 and we'll come back to nine. So I believe we can pass over number nine, to be honest with you, Mr. Chairman. Perfect. Okay. I'll either, uh, you guys stay any later than you need. So I asked the, to put this particular um, action on the agenda this evening only as a you know, just a clean up. You know, this subject came up several months ago and the town administrator has been getting a few phone calls from other interested parties uh, in regards to medical marijuana. And during the, those past meetings, I did bring up the fact that if the majority of this board felt pretty um, strong about having one of these in our town, that we at least follow an RFP process to determine what would be the best company to fit in our town to offer this service. So the, the reason why I asked for it on here is we got to give the town administrator some direction so he doesn't have to continue to get phone calls and not be able to provide any answers. So I want to leave it up to the board. I'd like to open up a, a quick discussion on this. And Yes. Could I add just Please. Um, one thing, which is that, uh, interestingly, We've received you know, inquiries, informal inquiries, but they are inquiries and they all seem to relate to a particular location here in town. And I think it became apparent um, through our brief discussions on this, Mr. Chairman, that uh, you know we really only get to consider what gets brought to us by virtue of what property is available. But if you look at some of the other communities uh, who, you know, if there were a desire to consider it, have gone through the RFP process. It allows them the opportunity to prescribe what standard they're looking for and to evaluate what options might be out there. So I, I would only note that in, in that from a standpoint of this property in the zoned area that's available, mm -hmm. and we really only see who has passed muster with the owner of that property. We don't know what other options would have been out there. And I'm not advocating one way or the other for medical marijuana, but it seems kind of interesting to me that we're almost – secondary in the whole thing, yet we were asked to provide a letter of non-opposition <laughs> uh, in the end. It's different than any other land use area where we really just get asked for a special, or the Planning Commission gets asked to provide a special permit. This is certainly right. much more involved than that. So I, I found that you know, honestly a bit interesting and curious more than anything else. But I'll end my comments there. Anybody, any board members? Yes, Mr. Masseri. Back when we had that first proposal, and uh, you know, we were talking about uh, the, the secondary issue of medical marijuana facilities have the right to sell recreational marijuana at some point. How they do it and how they organize, it's not very clear. And the company we were talking to said, you know, that they would uh, basically not go forward with the recreational marijuana and they'd put it in the agreement, et cetera, et cetera. But the more I've thought about it, uh, it seems like even going out to bid, I suppose if you put a bid package together and you declare that you cannot, you know, facilitate recreational marijuana as part of your facility, you know, maybe that'll fly, maybe it won't. But the legislature still hasn't come out with all the requirements and changes and modifications to recreational marijuana. 
And at this point, I guess I'm not in support of anything until that's clarified. It's a little change in my thinking from back a couple months ago. Mrs. Minyapel. And I think, I think I've been pretty clear about this myself that I'm not in favor of it at all. And I think we've, we've, we as a town have banned recreational. So whoever does come here in going through the requirements that they have to go through to even get permitted to operate would have to abide by that as our own town has deemed it so. But also, there's already safeguards in place. They do need a letter of permission from the town. So that's, that's a safeguard built in. They do need a valid location. It's not a right. It's a zoning district. It's not a right that someone has to come in here and do this. And I, I don't know why we would be inviting an RFP. It makes no sense to me. And, and I've said it before, too. It's completely contrary to the work that CIT does, the police department does, the youth services does. We have really significant active groups here that I, I just think inviting it in when we don't know what we're inviting in, why would we even do that? We have an obligation to entertain petitions because we have a district and we have an obligation to vet who comes in, and even if they're vetted by DPH. We saw the last time we had to do our own vetting and the chief thankfully did some, some significant vetting for us that wasn't done by the agency that's supposed to be doing it. So there's safeguards built in place and I'm not sure about the particular site that you are referring to but the last time we entertained this we were ousting a business. We would have been ousting a, a business from a location. So I don't know if it's a vacant area that you're talking Same about. Site. Right, so it's, it's probably the same owner who's, you know, inviting participation and perhaps still inclined to boot out that other property. But I also wouldn't be in favor of something like that. It's private land and, the, and the, obviously she can do whatever she wishes with her private property. But we, we had this issue with people coming forward saying you're supposed to be pro-business and we are pro-business and we are working towards Moving, moving forward with economic development, but ousting a business for this business to usher in, I, I don't think there's any amount of money that would entice, entice consideration of that. But we do still have an obligation to entertain someone who's a, a party that's met all the criteria and wants to do it, so. Mr. Schultz. Yeah, I wasn't here on the board when the last group came through, but I want to echo both of my colleagues' comments. I think with any statute, meaning medicinal marijuana, it's relatively new. The legislator can always pass a statute, but until the SJC codifies it and there's case law on a statute, you, don't, you really don't know what the nuts and bolts of that statute are. And we don't know how this is going to play out. We just, as a town, as Ms. Manupelli stated correctly, we just banned recreational. Well. What if somebody challenges that under an equal protection or some type of a constitutional clause of our state constitution and that's thrown out? I mean, we, I'm sure there's somebody that's going to challenge some town's ban somewhere in some court. Until all these things are flushed out, I don't see the need to, to rush out and try to get proposals. If somebody wants to apply, they can apply. That's fine. That's their right. And it's our job as a board to vet those people, determine whether it's somebody we want in our town or not. I just think the social cost, I just don't know if the public truly knows that you're going to have, even medicinal, you're going to have vans riding around town with cash and product. I mean, it's a crime scene waiting to happen. It just, there's a lot of social costs with this that I don't think everybody sees. Everybody just sees tax revenue, tax revenue, but what are we going to spend extra in police protection? You know, there's a lot of social issues that just, I think we have to, number one, make sure we know what the law is when the Supreme Judicial Court has ruled on it. And number two, I don't think we need to invite people in. If they want to apply, they can apply, and I'm willing to listen with an open mind, as all you guys are. I just don't think it's somebody we want to, I don't think it's an issue that we need to invite 10 different proposals on. That's just, you know, I'm just one vote of five, but that's just my take on it. Anyone else? Okay, well, you've heard me talk about this the past meetings that we had, um, and I certainly, my biggest number one concern is, is really, the community and what we're trying to achieve here 
and I do believe, I do agree that any kind of revenue that comes from this is going to be offset by the level of effort that's going to create in our police department. Um, but that's good. I'm glad we worked this out, at least to the fact that at this time we're not willing to submit or entertain an RFP. At least now the town administrator has that information, so when this phone rings, I guess the only thing I get, we're trying to relay on to you is that under the law, they should just follow the law. And if the law allows them to submit an unsolicited request, then they can go ahead and they have that right. And we will determine when we have time in our agendas to, uh, I guess, consider them. But is there a process, what I don't understand how we went through this the last time, maybe the chief can put some insight on it. Is there a process we're supposed to follow if you get a formal request? Because that just didn't seem like a normal process that we followed. Well, I, I <laughs> there, there, the regulations. There, there are certain, I guess you could call them milestones that a um, a petitioner has to meet in terms of the process, the state process. And I think the last time we we felt like it was a sudden, quick, you know. Mm because they were up against a deadline that had gone on for quite a, about a year's time, and they had just arrived at the location and had come to us almost at the end of that year's period of time. So it seemed like it was a rush to consider it, but it was because of their state-imposed deadline of when they needed to get the letter of authorization. So there's, there's state regulations in place for qualified, um, Petitioners, qualified candidates. Good. Michael. No, I. I mean, I, the only thing I would add is, we. The request is generally for a, a letter of non-opposition, and then uh, my understanding is it's followed by a special permit application that can be filed. The application we, could be filed at any point in time, but it probably won't go very far in terms of getting a, a license from the state without that letter of non-opposition. So. I think that's why this process has been a bit disjointed because of those two things that are needed. It's not just the permit that's needed. So, but the, the two the the, the to the uh, firms that have uh, inquired, what I'll indicate to them is that we, we don't, town doesn't intend to issue an RFP. Um, if there's any information that any particular entity wants to f send along, that it'll be forwarded to the board of selectmen and their correspondence, and they'll determine any further action uh, at their yeah. at their own pace. And the last thing I'm going to say on this is I have been contacted by several people in town that are very interested in a medical marijuana facility opening. They have prescriptions themselves. It would be a lot easier for them quality of life wise to, to be able to obtain it locally. I understand that and I do respect that. I think every, I speak for everybody on the board. I think everybody respects those requests, but um, I think, I think we're going in the right direction though. I think as a board, I think we're all on the same page on this. And it's not out of disrespect to those folks that have their uh, prescriptions. I just think we, you know, at this point, let's, we don't have to force it. Let's just let those happen naturally, naturally through the legal process. Okay, so let's move on to the next subject unless uh, anyone else? Good? Thank you. Thank you, Thank Thank you. Very, very much. Rita, would you give the chief a birthday hug for me since I'm in the middle of something? Thank you. Uh, okay. Just going to give the town administrator a minute. So I think we only have one thing left in the agenda before we go to old and new business. Uh, town administrator's report and old and new business. We have to discuss the review status of the MWRA water project and Andover discussion. And we'll just wait on the town administrator. Al, did you have a public comment or anything you wanted to make? Uh, well, I, I'm actually here because of the uh, drone uh, petition there. Yeah, we already went through that one. Yeah, I don't know. No, I mean, <laughs> not at all. But I, I don't agree with no. you. No. Know, you are? Yeah. Yeah, you, Mrs. Minupelli, no. believe it. You, you and Mrs. Minupelli are on the same page on that. Yeah. I, one thing, uh, um, Al, I don't think it's going to, like someone like yourself, 
the, and I read the statute, I was thinking of someone like yourself who uses it for legitimate purposes, who calls the Lawrence Airport and is FAA certified and everything. It doesn't speak to you at all. No. And I understand that, yeah. but again, you know, what are the cops going to be chasing drones all over the place now when they get a call, oh, the phone just went over oh. my property, my kids are out there playing. It, it doesn't make sense. Yeah. I'm gonna, I'm gonna stop you there if you don't mind. I apologize. You have an opportunity. You're always welcome. The chief's door is always open at the station. Feel free to stop in and you can chat with him about it. And then, uh, town meeting floor will be the next time we have this up for discussion. I, I wish you had come up during the public hearing and voice some of your, your, your opinions because they, they do mean a lot on that particular subject. But, town meeting, come prepared. That would be helpful if you wouldn't mind. Okay. Thank you. Mr. Gilbert, over to you. Just a quick update with regard to uh, the MWRA um, project. Uh, so again, the work on the FEIR uh, continues uh, relative to providing a response uh, for the MWRA connection. Um, the 75 percent design plans for the work in the town of Reading have been reviewed by uh, officials in the town of Reading, and we are scheduling both uh, design uh, engineering and business meeting with them for early June as well, uh, relative to uh, our uh, long-term relationship with Reading. Um, <clears throat> the second piece uh, relative to the town of Andover, uh, Selectman um, uh, Prisco, Selectman Mandipelli and I met with officials from the uh, town of um, there? Yeah. I Selectman wasn't there. Trying Masseri to keep the meeting straight, I apologize. <laughs> Selectman Masseri, Selectman Manipelli. What meeting was that? <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, I, mean, I was going to say this. Too many meetings. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, we bad. met with officials from the town of Andover, and um, the status, uh, we advised them that, you know, again, as we've stated many times, uh, based on the timelines uh, in effect, both with the IMA, with the Andover, and the condition of our existing wells, we are proceeding forward with the planned interconnection to the MWRA, including requesting capital funds at the June town meeting uh, and that uh, we were expecting to be uh, bidding out the construction projects at the uh, later half of this calendar year for construction to be beginning, uh, if not at the end of the calendar year, then certainly in full board at the very beginning of the construction season next year. And uh, they replied that they would be uh, having a discussion with their board of selectmen. This was their chairman of the selectmen, public works director, town manager, and deputy town manager that they would consult with the Board of Selectmen at their meeting uh, this evening uh, relative to uh, potential uh, further discussions about a, an IMA that would be uh, uh, for allowing the, ultimately providing for the town of Andover to provide the town of North Reading all of uh, its water needs. We relayed back to them you know, that we had a number of concerns relative to that as a potential option, uh, but that uh, the issue of permanency in providing the water and, of course, cost um, were, were, were significant factors for us, um, and the permanency being the more difficult of the two issues for us to address. So uh, we expect to hear back from them uh, relative to how those discussions go. We'll keep the board apprised, and in the meantime, as we've stated many times previously, we continue the work ahead relative to the MWRA interconnection. Any board members have any questions? Good. I think we're over to the town administrator's report. Thank you. I had five items in my report, and a number have come up since I wrote the report. So <laughs> I apologize; it is fairly lengthy, it's okay. but hopefully informative. The first is that we've been informed by the Alcoholic Beverage Control Commission by advisory that permitted uh, package stores will be allowed to open at 12 noon on Memorial Day. This is a change from the law previously in which they were not allowed to open at all. Uh, and that's been done uh, and, and affected by the action at the state level with no uh, action required by the local licensing authority. And I want to thank the folks at Eastgate for bringing it our, to our attention. <laughs> um, normally we would get a communication, but we didn't receive one, uh, at least to this point. So, um, so they can sell alcohol now on Memorial Day. On Memorial Day, Day beginning past at noontime. You couldn't sell any. Couldn't sell it at all, but now you can sell beginning at noontime. Uh, in response to the board's request, I attached a status report on the issue of backup for our information systems, which was provided to me by the Director of Information Technology, uh, Matthew Cooper. I'll just read quickly from it. The IT department's currently continuing with the previous IT director's backup practices. While possible improvements are evaluated to ensure that North Reading remains current with industry standards. Presently, 
Regularly scheduled backups of mission critical data are being copied from their original locations to a backup server, and the copies of the backup server data are moved off site on rotating media for the purposes of catastrophic disaster recovery. So that's the protocol in place now. We're looking at additional improvements in the long term, potentially necessitating a, a capital request in fiscal year 19. In response to the board's inquiry, uh, I'll report back to you that the bachelor school construction appropriation has in fact been closed out. I know that was a question that was brought up when we were talking about the staircase and the capital improvement plan. Pursuant to the board's prior authorization, a town-owned land auction for eight acres boulevard will be held on May 30th at 11 o'clock a.m. here in town hall. Um, and then I'll move over to the uh, Newer items. Just a note from um, the town clerk relative to town meeting, as I mentioned earlier, <clears throat> the high school's grand march will be occurring the evening of town meeting, and it's likely to result in a significant amount of traffic on the high school campus, particularly between the 5 and 6 o'clock hours. Um, the police chief just informed me that there was a possibility based on traffic that they may need to close the access road um, in the uh, earlier part of that time frame. So, Mr. Chairman, through you, we may want to have a discussion about potentially altering the start time of our meeting from 6 o'clock until 6.30 based on the limited availability for traffic access. Uh, we can touch base uh, this week, though, relative okay. to that. Okay, yeah. Um, I would also note that uh, th this event, if it's held inside because of inclement weather, may delay the setup of uh, some of the tables associated for town meeting check-in. In the area of the town meeting check-in, uh, the town clerk will be using the electronic pull pads for check-in once again. However, they've borrowed two additional units at no cost from the vendor for a total of four check-in stations. Voters will be able to go to any line as the check-in list is, in alphabet is alphabetical by name and not by precinct or address. A driver's license on hand will allow for a faster check-in but is not required to check-in at town meeting. Uh, voters can always give their name just to check in uh, as well. Um, yes. Is it, are you saying that the uh, the basic parade of the uh, seniors is going to take place there regardless of weather? That's correct. Because okay. I, I guess originally they used to do it over the park, and then they decided to do it in there was bad weather. But okay, so. That's, that's an interesting issue associated with the overall timing of everything. It is. The parking lot will be full between the kids mm -hmm. and all the parents that are going to come separately, right? Uh, yeah, so if we could move the meeting later, but then we'll, how much time do we have? Not much. No. 30 minutes. We may have to look creatively at another opportunity for recommendations to be made. I, I don't know. Um, so we'll have to talk, Mr. Chairman, to figure out what, what makes the most sense. The, the potential road closure was new information to me this evening that the Chief just relayed. The other thing we could do is we can meet off-site here. Mm -hmm. You can do it without me, and, you, and then you guys get up there. That's true, yep. What's going to be on the agenda, Michael? Uh, it'll, be the, it'll be the balance of the recommendations, and, and mm -hmm. while it's not many, there are some things that will require action. Yeah. I if there's any the budget amendments. Way, if they're uh, the solid waste stabilization fund, the water retained earnings, th those types of things. Yeah. We've had a one year already. Yeah. 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 We already did. They already did the yeah, walkthrough there once good. before. So they actually, the first the first year I served. They did in 2015. Yeah, they had right. the June the June town meeting right. was concurrent with the grand march, which was inside. Right. And, and we were meeting over at the distance learning lab. We did. Right. Yeah. Right. We did. That's okay. Right. Well, let's do it. I, I think that, well, I, I, but I, I think that I there's other concerns we have to discuss. Okay. <laughs> We're going to get back. Let's, yeah. let, let the town administrator and I talk about it. We have to solve it tonight. Um, so I think that that was all with regard to the town clerk's report on the town meeting. I just, you know, again, want to notify folks, just be aware of the additional activity and that this is something that we're trying to work around to make sure that it works out for everybody. 
Um, there'll be notification in the newspaper this week, and I'll notify the community by virtue of my comments here that there will be an aquatic treatment of um, Martin's Pond. And those of you who've been on the board for a little while, I recall that we initiated this, I think, two summers ago with a treatment for an invasive uh, aquatic species by virtue of a vote at town meeting. This is a follow-up treatment that would take place, and it's scheduled to take place on Wednesday, May 31st. There will be quite a bit of publicity uh, surrounding this, including a uh, signboard signage around the lake, um, and I believe we've used a reverse 911 call as well. And effectively, the restrictions are that the uh, water is able to be used for boating after the treatment, but not for irrigation or for drinking. Uh, and uh, pending the results of a follow-up test, which is usually a few weeks later, it's then cleared for any other uses that it would ordinarily be used. Um, so I just would notify fa folks that that's something that's in the, um, in the works for, for next week. We've put up on the website a notice relative to uh, water quality in our public schools. Uh, and it relates to the issue of lead and uh, copper uh, in our drinking water. And, uh, and fortunately, that's not been an issue for, uh, for our infrastructure here in North Reading. But there's a detailed advisory that's been posted on the town website and on the school department website. I have uh, issued a letter to the Executive Office of Energy and Environmental Affairs expressing our interest in the um, in, their, in their municipal vulnerability preparedness program, which is something that's aimed at addressing climate change, but uh, it's not, it also makes grant funding available for potential preventative or other uh, projects that relate to our hazard mitigation plan. So uh, I want to thank the Department of Public Works and the town engineer for identifying this as a potential resource to bring um, funds into town to address some of our needs. There will be a bit of a planning and study effort that will take place to identify any potential needs as they might relate to hazard mitigation and uh, a potential application could be submitted to the state for funding. Bear with me one moment, Mr. Chairman, please. Okay, and finally, just providing an update as a follow-up to the discussion during the capital improvement planning um, reports presentation. Um, we have a tentative uh, identification of the roads for road resurfacing this upcoming construction season uh, with all projects likely, likely to begin shortly after July 1st. Um, and the, the roads that have, ident have been identified, most of which have been reviewed by the Capital Improvement Planning Commis uh, Committee, are as follows. Uh, the full length of Eagle Drive, uh, full length of Patriot Way, partial area of Sunset Avenue from Wagon to North, partial area of Wagon Drive from Sunset to Wyoming, and the full length of Wyoming Avenue from Wagon to North Streets. And these are all identified in our pavement management plan. We are going to go through and update the pavement management plan later this season, um, and it, there may be a possibility for additional projects to be done depending upon whether there's any subsurface drainage or other uh, pr preparation that needs to be done prior to paving on these roads. It's possible we could expand this. We tried to be conservative in terms of the projection, but it's possible we may be adding to this. There's a final project relative to an unaccepted road that we'll be doing cooperatively with the developer, and that's for a portion of Hancock Road, which goes from Devons to uh, Dix. And in that scenario, uh, there is, uh, the road will be, uh, there's an existing drainage issue that's washing out to a public way that will be addressed. A uh, cooperative project to install a water main in that stretch of road, and then the town will resurface a stretch of road from Devons to Dix uh, as well, uh, which will address a long-standing drainage issue in the lower section of that street. Um, and so they would, they would pave it? That's correct. So Devons to Dix? So Devons to Dix will be paved. That's the, t the, the town's taking responsibility for that paving. Yeah. Um, the town will provide the materials for a water main to be installed. The developer is responsible for all the drainage improvements and yep. for installing the water main infrastructure as well. Um, so that was a cooperative arrangement that was identified through a planning board approval last year, scheduled to take place after July 1st. And uh, I believe that concludes my comments for this evening. I apologize there was so much additional information. Say anything about the fire open? The yes. Fire Thank you, Mr. Chairman. <laughs> um, Chairman's reminding me that we did have a significant house fire over the weekend, and I, I think if you were around town, you saw, smelled, or heard it, uh, based on all the activity. And, um, you know, a situation where a very windy day, again, um, 
houses in fairly close confines. Uh, there were multiple other buildings that received damage uh, in the form of melted siding or other damage. But um, the fire was put down uh, by our fire department working cooperatively with mutual aid from other communities. Um, you know, the house was a total loss, unfortunately. Um, and uh, I know that uh, the uh, residents will be working with their insurance companies relative to, to that. Um, fortunate that nobody was hurt uh, or that nobody uh, or, or worse. But um, I just want to thank the fire department for their efforts. Um, it was a challenging day, challenging time of day with a, a lot of folks off doing whatever it is they need to be doing, including folks in the department. But uh, through the, uh, the, the, the instincts of the commanding officer, they were able to uh, identify the resources necessary and get them in quickly for the fire. So thank you, Mr. Chairman, for reminding me. No, no problem. I just certainly want to thank the mutual aid communities that mm. did come, and I believe it was Wilmington, Reading, and Middleton. I Middleton. I want to thank them because it was important for them to be there, mm -hmm. and it certainly kept the other uh, abutting homes safer. Mm -hmm. You know, some had some damage, but, you know, we talk about this whole response time, and I know we've talked a little bit about your town halls, but this is a perfect example you see you know, being that far away, you know, we were a little closer, could we have kept some of that damage? I don't know, but it's certainly a discussion that should still mm -hmm. continue to happen as we go along and make a decision for the future uh, next fire station. Mm -hmm. But what a wonderful job, and uh, I'm sure the other board members feel the same way. Anything else? No, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Masiri. I just want to wish board members and everyone in mm -hmm. town uh, coming up on Memorial Day. I would hope that everyone take time to go to the common and enjoy the uh, the parade and uh, the ceremonies thereafter. Thank you. June 11th, Sunday, the first ever North Reading Town Day. Yeah. This could be the biggest event of its kind ever in our town. Uh, I believe there's over 60 or 70 booths already um, reserved. And they have a handful left, so we'll contact the Chamber of Commerce if you want to, your business group, restaurant, whatever you have, if you want to be there. It's going to be a big event for the town. It's going to be a great day. Thanks for joining us and keeping a record of everything. <laughs> and just to echo Selectman Mosseri, that hopefully everyone, Memorial Day is when we remember all of our service members who have died protecting us preserving our liberty so in the midst of all the fun hoping people just bear that in mind and do something special to remember um, our service members who have passed on defending us defending our freedom and um, looking forward to attending the ceremonies with everybody here thank you guys I want to just pass along another uh, thank you to all the firefighters that did respond to that fire. I know that wasn't an easy one, and uh, I'm glad no one was hurt, and certainly none of our officers were hurt. So thank you for that effort. Um, but in Memorial Day, it's, I think it's a wonderful day, a great opportunity for us to, to show thanks and to show support. You know, we don't live in a safe world. As uh, much as we sometimes forget when we live in our little bubble here, it is a very, very dangerous world, and we're very fortunate to have the men and women protecting us. You know, even as of tonight, there was a concert, and uh, there was 19 people killed in a, an Man attack. Manchester, England. And, you know, that affects everyone and those kinds of things, but we're very fortunate to have an armed forces that will hopefully keep us safe and protect us from more of those events happening. So please, let's pray for those folks in the UK. And, um, you know, it's pretty sad, but Memorial Day is just another opportunity for us to, to remember. And I look forward to seeing all my board members there. And I want to thank the town administrator and your staff for preparing tonight's meeting. I know there was a lot there. But I think we did pretty good getting through it. And um, thank you for sitting in tonight for Jane. And I wish Jane and her son congratulations on his wedding. And uh, that's it. That's all I have. Mr. And Chairman, just yeah. to add, Kathy, thank you very much for filling in. We appreciate your time this evening. Yeah, I'll take a motion to adjourn. I'll give you a motion to adjourn. Yes, Mr. Second. Chairman, I'd like to take a motion to adjourn. Second. Uh, a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Yes.